Hi, this is Habiba. In this session, we are going to discuss how to interpret our measurement model in Smart PLS. Um, as we have mentioned earlier, the Smart PLS uh, guided us uh, to go for the measurement model assessment first. And if our results met the required criteria, the researcher then need to go for the structural model as per here HL 2017. Like most of the statistical method, PLSM has rule of thumb that serve as a guidelines to evaluate model results as per 10 2010 and here until 2017. And these rule of thumbs uh, serve you the guidelines to of how to interpret the results, but they all typically vary depending on the context of the study. For example, the reliability for exploratory research should be minimum 0.6, while reliability for research that depends on the established majors should be 0.7 or higher. And all those uh, matrix for robustness uh, checks of the results will depend upon the context of the study, such as the aim of the analysis and the availability of the data. Let's go for the assessment of the reflective measurement model. As I mentioned earlier, the measurement cost back, uh, sorry, reflective model are those in which the arrows are pointing out from the construct towards the indicator. We show that this uh, unobserved construct is reflecting itself through the presence of these uh, indicators or observed variables or observed characteristics. Measurement model is more concerned about the outer model. This shows the relationship between the constructs and the indicators reflecting the, those constructs and uh, and it also gives you the uh, uh, path analysis in the form of the beta uh, which is a relationship between the constructs and show that how much change in one construct will bring about the change in another uh, dependent construct so let's go for the first uh, independent as the genus variable gw and the beta values which usually range from 0 to 1 and it should approach 1. In the case of GW, it's 91.8%. We show that 100% change in GW or 1 unit change in GW will bring about 91.8% change in II or 0.918 units change in IR respectively. While in case of the ED, it shows that one unit change, the ED will bring about 0.59 units change in W. Okay, let's go to the first step in the reflective measurement model assessment involves examining those indicator loadings. And these loadings are um, indicate that the construct explains more than 50% of the indicator variance. And the threshold level value for this indicator loading is 0.708 okay what this threshold value of 0.708 uh, indicate that the, this construct explains more than 50 percent of the variance in the particular indicator and thus uh, providing acceptable item reliability so in the indicator loading we are going to check for the items are reliable or not uh, let's see let's go to results in case of our uh, we can see, uh, as we have mentioned earlier, in case of the reflective model, we will uh, go for the out outer weights first. Uh, while in case of the our measurement model, uh, we will uh, go for the our um, uh, outer loadings. Uh, here we can see that the green values show that these values have opposed the threshold value of 0.708, while the red one shows that they have failed to oppose the 0.708 but at least they should be more than 50 percent so we have not much issues with the e1 but in case uh, likewise uh, w1 is uh, posing some issue yeah, but uh, in si uh, all three of our green we show that they have uh, surpassed or approached the three short value of 0.708 while in case of we we have some issues uh, so let's go to our model to see how to resolve these issues. Okay, if we uh, let's go to our model. As we have the reflective material model, we have the foot liberty, full liberty that we can either delete or omit any of the items 
or indicator without affecting or deteriorating the meaning of the construct and without deteriorating the uh, parameter estimates of the model or the constructs. Uh, in that uh, case, if you want to delete any of those items less than um, uh, the threshold value, you all always have to check whether they, they have they are affecting the construct uh, reliability and uh, validity negatively because in case when we have suppose we will delete this one the indicator reliability we have let's find out we have issues with uh, two values of AB only but um, suppose if you are going to delete this uh, WE7 with the uh, least uh, uh, indicator or a uh, loading or item reliability. Let's see. Let's uh, run your model again. PLS algorithm. We had done consistent for the reflective model. Let's run it. It will take just a second. Uh, sorry, run it again. Okay. So let's see. Uh, no, it has uh, negatively affecting the values of the, of the other matrix. So we better leave this uh, indicator and uh, run it again so get the uh, uh, our values back so always remember that uh, as in smart pls you have the um, uh, advantage uh, here we can get the ba our values back you have the advantage in smart pls that you can run the bootstrap model which will give you the significance of all those items or indicators so if they appear significant you can retain them even though they are less than the threshold of 0.708. Uh, so uh, that we will run. So uh, there is uh, no need of deleting them because as if they are affecting the custom uh, item reliability and validity. So uh, in the first step, we just have to check what our outer loadings and whether they have reached the threshold of 0 0.708 or not. In the next session, we are going to discuss this step two which is consists of evaluating internal consistency reliability thank you